tunnel at Goggins Hill was to be the longest railway tunnel in the country, about a kilometre long, making this an epic engineering project of the Victorian railway age. In the days before drill bits and tunneling machines, breaking through rock required explosions. Lots of explosions. But first, the engineers needed to know where they were going. It's quite a feat to cut a curved tunnel more than a kilometre through a hill and have it come out exactly where you want it to. At the time, they didn't have engineering plans, but they did have maps. I'm meeting survey engineer Barry O'Keefe to find out how they put it all together. Barry, back in the 1840s, how would they have helped the diggers construct this tunnel? Well, using the, the detailed maps that existed, the designers would have sketched the proposed route of the railway. It was then the surveyor's job to go and determine where the tunnel is supposed to be. And it, once they had done that, they built a series of shafts. These shafts are evident here now as they later became ventilation shafts for the railway. They did a series of these across the hill. Then, with the surveyor inside the shaft, he could then determine the angle at which the blasting needs to begin. Six shafts were sunk into the hill and teams of workers started tunnelling towards each other at their base. The surveyors checked the progress, continually making slight adjustments to the direction of the curved line of the tunnel. The one thing I will say, they had time on their side, because if they were blasting only at a rate of one yard per week, there was a whole lot of time to recheck their observations and double check them. So while it was challenging, time was on their side to get it absolutely right. 